Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today we're going to answer the age-old question, is it possible to make a reverb unit out of stuff that you buy at the dollar store? A few videos ago, like four or five videos ago, I did this weird one-off video where uh, I talked about how you can make a drum out of um, a balloon and like a takeout container. Basically, all you do is you get a nice round takeout container and you get a balloon, you cut off the end, and you stretch the balloon over the mouth of the container. And um, it makes a kind of a weird drum, not like a normal drum, it's very, very floppy. Another thing that I noticed is that if you speak near these drums, they kind of reverberate in this really funny way. So I was thinking maybe I would try to recreate one of those drums, but turn it into a reverb unit. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so at the dollar store, I got a bunch of things. I got a plastic container that looks like this. I got a bunch of balloons and uh, I got these really cheap speakers. Uh, my plan is to basically put one of these speakers in here, put the balloon over the top, and then to use one of these piezo sensors, which I actually have left over from the violin project, uh, I'm gonna put the piezo sensor on the top, and um, yeah, hopefully that will be a reverb chamber. <laughs> we'll see. So construction's actually pretty simple. Basically, I'm just putting the speaker into the bucket, and then stretching the balloon over the top. As you can see, I've already attached the piezo sensor to the balloon. So in order to have something to test this reverb unit out on, uh, I've put together, not really a song, just kind of a loop uh, in Ableton. And my plan is to uh, just kind of sing whatever comes to mind over it, and that will be our test material. Okay, time to go sing something. Now that I've got some vocal takes, the next step is to record the reverb tails. First, I have to do some setup. I'm using my trusty Zoom recorder to output the dry audio to the speaker, and I'm also using the inputs on the same recorder to record the output of the piezo sensor. Okay, I think we're set up. Just to refresh your memory, here's what the dry vocals sounded like. I am a vessel Born on the breeze Okay, and here is what the first reverb tail sounds like. Here's what it sounds like in the track. So it's not just a reverb, it's doing something else there. It's actually uh, accentuating some frequency. I can kind of hear it uh, peaking. And anytime I hit that frequency with my vocals, it kind of like doubles or triples that one frequency. It's a pretty weird effect. Uh, of course, I didn't just record one reverb tail. I actually outputted the first reverb tail back into it so that we could get kind of like double and triple reverb. Uh, and that makes that effect even greater. Like, listen to this. basically unintelligible and like no longer even sounds like the source signal at all. And then the third reverb tail, which is basically two times reverbed uh, through the balloon reverb, uh, sounds like this. And all together, all of these reverb tails turned on, it sounds like this. I am a vessel. So yeah, quite a mess. Uh, overall, it does actually sound like reverb. Um, not 
maybe the best sounding reverb. Uh, would I use it in a track? Definitely, but probably not as a reverb. I'd probably use it as like a kind of weird effect. Uh, I think that if you took a drum beat and put it through that, that weird effect where it's kind of like taking certain frequencies and amplifying them way more than others would actually be a benefit for drum beats because sometimes you want to do something like that, like ring modulation or something. So to answer the question from up top, yes, you can make a reverb chamber out of stuff that you bought at the dollar store. It will sound like this though. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you like and subscribe. Um, yeah, see you next time.